lesson, we'll look at the quantitative comparison questions on the quantitative reasoning section and examine methods and strategies to solve them most effectively. Quantitative comparisons, or QCs for short, are likely different from any math problems you've done before. That's not necessarily a bad thing. They actually tend to require fewer calculations than traditional math problems. The purpose of a QC is not to compute the answer, but to determine which of the two columns is larger in quantity. To understand the basic structure of every QC, let's look at an example you'd see on the test. In this sample problem, x is greater than 1. There are two quantities, a and b, each of which has a specific quantity. There is sometimes, but not always, information centered above the columns. Quantity a is x squared. Quantity b is x cubed. The layout is always the same. The answer choices for quantitative comparisons are always the same as well. Let's bring them up. The answer choices are that quantity A is greater, that quantity B is greater, that the two quantities are equal, and finally, that the relationship cannot be determined from the information given. Now that you know the layout of every quantitative comparison question, you have one less thing to decipher. Let's look at the method for solving QCs. Step 1. Analyze the two columns. Use the centered information if any is given to you. Step 2. Compare the sizes of the quantities in the columns. So let's look at quantity A and quantity B. The answer choices are the same in all QCs. In the first step of the method, using the centered information, we have a number greater than 1, that number squared in column A, and a number greater than 1 cubed in column B. In step 2, we compare the columns. According to the rules of exponents, any number greater than 1 increases as its exponent gets larger. Therefore, the quantity in column B is larger since x has a larger exponent there. That was a pretty basic QC. Fortunately, we're going to show you strategies that can make even complicated QCs much easier. Let's take a look at another problem. This might look challenging at first glance because the two columns look different. It's much easier to compare similar looking quantities, so the first strategy we're going to use here is called compare apples to apples. By foiling, which we'll discuss later, we can make column A look more like column B. Quantity A reads as 9x squared minus 42x plus 49. And quantity B reads as 9x squared minus 42x plus 50. By using the compare apples to apples strategy for that question, we can do a side-by-side -side comparison of quantities A and B so they look more like each other. This makes the question easier to solve, but we still haven't found our answer yet. Let's move on to the next strategy, which is called divide and conquer. If we consider each of the terms independently, we notice that the first two terms of both columns are exactly the same, 9x squared minus 42x. We can cancel them to even it out by a process called adjusting both columns. So let's cross out 9x squared minus 42x. Remember, when you use the process of adjusting both columns, whatever you do to one column, you have to do to the other. That leaves us with 49 in column A and 50 in column B. Clearly, since 49 is smaller than 50, quantity B is larger. The second choice is the answer. Another strategy to apply to QCs is to compare instead of compute. Let's look at an example. In column A, we have a negative number taken to an even exponent. And in column B, we have a negative number taken to an odd exponent. Here's a pro tip. In the effort to try to make these problems as easy to solve as possible, remember that an even number of negative signs cancel each other out. Knowing this, let's go back to the question. Let's break this down. After we cancel out the negative signs, quantity B has one left over, and the end result is a negative number, negative 4. Any positive is greater than any negative, so quantity A is greater. Let's review how we solve that quantitative comparison. We can easily answer the question by simply comparing an unknown positive to an unknown negative. For problems such as this, it's always easier to compute instead of calculate. Our final QC strategy is plugging in numbers and testing for the fourth answer choice. Try plugging in two values. If we keep getting the same answer, then we've found the right answer. However, if different values of a variable result in different answers, then the fourth answer choice, which means the larger column cannot be determined from the given information, is correct. 
Here, we have two inequalities that, when combined, mean t can be anywhere between 0 and 1. First, t equals 9 tenths, which is close to 1. Plugging that value for t into both columns, we see that quantity b is larger. Now let's try to plug in t as 1 tenth, a number that's on the other end of the spectrum, closer to 0. Solving for this value, we see that quantity a is larger. Since different values of t yield different results, the answer must be the fourth answer choice. Remember, when you use the plug-in numbers strategy in a QC, plug in more than one to make sure your answers are consistent. If they are, you have your answer. If they're not, the fourth answer choice is correct. So keep practicing till you feel confident.